You are about to enter the world of miracle. The story is wonderful, but it can get dark at times. Content warnings can be found in the episode description or in chat. But before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors for this game, without whom this just would not be possible. Our first sponsor is Alchemy RPG, an immersive new virtual tabletop experience specializing in theater of the mind, stunning visuals, and building worlds through exploration, roleplay, and combat. In fact, our game was recorded using Alchemy's native interface, so you'll have a front row seat to some of its great features. You can download Alchemy now at alchemyrpg.com and make use of their incredible library, including content from Griffin Saddlebag, 1985 games, and content from our next sponsor, Hit Point Press. Big bads are on the loose. Foil the schemes of a gelatinous kingpin tangled with a mischievous sea dragon and face down world ending threats. With over 25 fully fleshed out boss monsters and over 100 more monsters and magic items, Big Bads is a two volume collection of the biggest, baddest boss monsters in all of 5e launching in March on Kickstarter. Sign up now to be notified when it launches in March at bigbads.com. Lastly, I'd like to thank Hero Forge for providing our players with the ability to create an array of digital character minis specifically for this game using its massive library of 3D asset choices. A huge thank you to our sponsors, and now, enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Of Dawn and Dusk. And players, welcome to Of Dawn and Dusk to you as well. I am lucky to have assembled what I believe to be an absolute all-star cast of players uh, for this four-part miniseries. So why don't we let them introduce themselves? Uh, let's start with Jasmine. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can do this. Hi, I'm Jasmine, also known as that bronze girl online. Um, I do lots of things. I'm a full-time content creator. I'm a writer uh, for Critical Role. I don't know if you've heard of that show. I'm a world builder for the Marquette setting. Um, I've done stuff with Dimension 20, Penny Arcade, D&D Beyond, all of them. Uh, and you can see me do all these things on the internet all the time. But my favorite show is Tuesday Night's Shikar, which Sefi is also in. So check it out. Very awkward. I'm so sorry. No, you're great. Let's not do characters yet. Uh, thank you, Jasmine. Um, let's go to uh, Christian. My name is Christian Navarro. I'm an actor, new to the D and D world, but I'm quickly immersing myself with these wonderful people, and I'm very happy to be here for for Johnny. And we are so happy to have you, uh, Sefi. You're up next. Hi, I'm Sefi. They found me down the street, and now I'm here, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I am known as Persephroth Online. You might recognize me from Dimension 20, uh, Shikar with Jasmine, which is Jasmine's game, uh, Fast Times at D&D High. You know, I'm just everywhere spreading my love across the internet um, where people don't want me. So, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, uh, Luis Carrazzo. Hey, everybody. I'm Luis Carrazzo, uh, actor, and uh, been in a couple of different uh, streams, uh, Critical Role, a couple of things. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, uh, just by putting, you know, searching my name, Luis Carrazzo, you'll find me. Um, and that is all I got to say right now. And that handsome mug. <laughs> yeah. This one? We have a beautiful, one. beautiful cast here. Uh, we are being produced by Dan Munoz, who is off camera, but he will be here the whole time. He is incredible and has made this uh, production just so, so uniquely amazing. Um, but let's, uh, let's get into it. What do you guys think? Hell yeah. I'm always ready to get I'm into it. I'm ready. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm so it. ready. Welcome to Miracle. Miracle is a world of high fantasy. Empires reign. Treacherous villains vie for power and mighty heroes defend the righteous. It is a world that you are no doubt familiar with. Uh, however, this world is different because it is overseen by two gods, Luma, the goddess of light, and Noctos, the god of darkness. These two gods balance the scales of all divine domains, neither truly representing good nor evil. Unfortunately, that does not stop zealots from making their own assumptions about the gods' intentions for their own gain, spreading evil in the name of light and dark. We enter this world during the long winter, over a year into it, uh, a frigid time in the history of Miracle in which cold temperatures have caused a near panic around the world. 
Fields have refused to yield crop. Sickness has spread like wildfire. And at this point, no one can hope to escape the clutches of the long winter. They can only hope to find some respite. And speaking of someone who is finding that respite, we cut to uh, someone who's escaping the cold underground, uh, but not finding herself necessarily in a very comfortable situation. Deep underneath Sanera, the Academy of Spells. Within their heavily guarded lower dungeons, we find Holly Dames, better known as Midnight. Within these dank, mildewy hallways, you have managed to evade the guards' sight lines and are closing in on your destination. How have you been able to manage this? The guard are mostly concerned with people getting out, not getting in. It's rare for someone to want to sneak down here. Uh, you are pressed up against a wall within one of the uh, small rooms here in this lower dungeon. And above your shoulder floats a silvery orb, uh, two thin beams of light turn away from the wall, um, hiding uh, these beams of light, creating an expression um, uh, of almost a face with a bemused expression, um, as if this orb could make an expression. A voice comes from it, whispered, uh, the light brightening a bit with every word that is spoken. Miss Danes, although I do not possess nostrils, this dungeon reeks of mold and pitiful self-importance. Pray, I ask you, how do you plan to bypass these gods who while dim-witted do, in fact, outnumber you 19 to 1? Well, the numbers don't matter as long as they don't see me, Professor Humphreys. Your professor's orb, Professor Humphreys, uh, sits over your shoulder, floating. So you, well, Miss Staines, you are aware that it has been... While it has been the better part of a decade since you attended the School of Ar Arcane Instruction, you remain prime persona non grata to most, if not all, Sonera personnel, and they will not hesitate to remove your head from that body of yours, and it will not, mind you, float along in relative peace as I have come to experience. Listen, if my head does get separated from my pretty little neck, at least it'll look beautiful rolling across the floor. Now be quiet, or they'll notice us. Just making my, uh point clear. You've made it. Now, if you're done giving me anxiety about the fact that we're surrounded by Sonera's guard. He uh, falls silent, the lights growing dim. Um, and from over your shoulder, he says, if, if you don't mind, Miss Dines, I do believe that the timer on the explosive that you painted upstairs should be finishing right about from ab above you, the uh, a loud explosion uh, rings out. The ceilings of this dungeon, uh, dust falls from their cracks. Uh, you hear guards shuffling from outside this room. What the hell was that? Get up there, that's where we needed. And you hear footsteps running past. Um, and after a moment, they all seem to have gone away. And you seem to be in this hallway alone. Put a bit of cheese in front of a mouse and they'll always run in that direction. Let's go. You exit this room, finding no guards to, to be seen, and uh, you continue down the hallway until you find the room that you're looking for. Uh, it is unguarded now, but heavily fortified uh, with a lock that is guarding it. Um, you run up to it uh, and there is a, it's like a pinwheel lock. Uh, and you you find yourself just mere inches away from your destination. Let's pop this open, shall we? Um, sleight of hand. Uh, let's do thieves tools check. Thieves uh, tools. Proficiency plus dex. Okay, that is a twenty-two. Amazing. Uh, however, not good enough as you <gasps> try mm. to pull uh, to the right so softly with your ear held up to the. Uh, listening for the for the uh, locks to fall. The very last lock you can tell is just on the very edge. And as you turn your hand just a slight bit more, you feel a catch and it's not going through. You feel like you might not be able to necessarily get this just by your, uh, your sleight of hand. Well, that's going to be a bit of a problem, but no one's around. So I'm going to... I'm gonna acid arrow it. You're gonna acid arrow it? Yeah, why not? Okay, 
Amazing. Um, why don't you uh, roll to hit? Hit with the same. That's a 10. <laughs> with a 10, uh, you release your hand as the arrow flies into it, sizzling with this um, caustic acid. It hits the door right on the lock, but doesn't seem to make a dent. This, uh, you know, the, this school is well known for the, the, the slight tricks. Uh, however, um, Professor Humphreys from above your shoulder says, Miss Staines, might I suggest you use your uh, signature pigments? Oh, oh, that would be smart. This is why I keep you around, Humphreys. Oh, why you keep me humble, miss. Why didn't I use these in the first place? All right, so I am going to reach into my pouch and I'm going to pull out a set of three pigments. I have more, but I need to match the color of the gray of the door. So I start and I pull out this metal palette and I start mixing very quickly, rapidly until I have a color of paint that matches the shadow of the door. And then I paint over the edges and then cover the lock and just paint a door handle. Amazing, this takes you hardly any time at all with the amount of skill that you've been able to accumulate with these Midnight's Marvelous Pigments. You create this door, and as you finish painting the door handle, you can feel it almost as if it's a kind of a magic painting where if you change your perspective, you can start to uh, see the depth to it. And as you step away from it and, and gain a little bit of perspective on it, you can see that this has um, protruded from the door. And uh, you can see that the handle is physical and unlocked. You know, it never hurts to try and use our other skills, right, Humphreys? It's always good to uh, keep on working on those skills. That is correct, Miss Staines. Let's go in. I'm going to open the door handle. You open the door handle to the room that has haunted your dreams for so long within Sonera, Sonera's hallways. And as you open it, you don't see what you expect. You see no dungeon room with stone walls and water dripping from the ceiling. Instead, you see a sort of liminal space. This completely white room, almost antiseptic in scent. You have, you have to shield your eyes for a moment from the brightness before understanding the space that you're in. You're no longer under the school. There's no door behind you as you turn, as you turn around. You're completely alone in this room. Hmm. That's not eerie at all. The great and mysterious midnight. Wow, I am a, I'm a big fan. Do I recognize this voice? You do not. Where is it coming from? It is, as you were kind of making your like sightline around this room, trying to take in the space, it uh, is perfectly right, right behind you. As like just from a moment, uh, from a spot you just looked. And as you turn, you see uh, a bald man with pale skin, made even paler from the light of this room. He wears simple white robes with accents of black trim and lacing. He wears a smile on his face, but uh, no insight check needed. It feels a bit forced and polite. Well, hello. Uh, hello there. Um, I, uh, I'm Diamond, uh, and you are the vigilante artist Midnight. Well, you, um, most men know you as Midnight, obviously. I I know you as, as Holly, mm. but I, I do know most things. I'm sorry to be putting you in that position. Um, I know that this work is incredibly important and I interrupted that, I apologize, but there are much larger and more grave stakes. Enlighten me, as you have this room, clearly. I come on behalf of the gods, as hard as that may be to believe. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord of Darkness, Noctos, there is an incredibly urgent situation that he has requested that I reach the most capable hands to work on. I'll be frank, heaven is under siege and you need to help save it. What could little old me do for the gods? I believe you can do more than you even know. And we will jump from there 
to the town of Stonegrove. A small mining town, a quaint village of mostly humans and dwarves. We see bundled up men and women braving the weather to make ends meet. Away from all the hustle and bustle of the mine carts and picks hitting stone, we enter a tiny hut, warmed by a fire lit from within. Inside, a child with red puffy eyes gets a bandage wrapped over a scratch on his arm. M Miss, Miss Mildred, when is it gonna start feeling better? Uh, well, if... Oh, oh wait, just a moment. If you keep <laughs> it clean, it should feel better in probably a couple of days. But if you don't keep it clean, it'll go gangrene, and then you'll probably die. So make sure you keep it clean. <laughs> he was about to ask a question, and then that last comment kind of like gave him pause and he looks a little bit panicked. Uh, okay, okay, Miss Mildred, I'll do what you say. And he kind of runs out of the door, um, possibly a little bit more scared than he was when he walked in. Ah, uh, um, I'm so good with kids. <clears throat> <laughs> Can you uh, describe Mildred for us? I uh, apologize, for, uh, Persephone. We will get um, to Holly's uh, description soon. Mildred is a very skinny dragonborn who dresses uh, to obfuscate her slight figure in robes upon robes upon robes, which actually uh, fit in with the long winter that has settled in. Um, she is a bronze dragon and has uh, these sort of like, um, I guess like horns, dragon horns that go backwards. She wears a large hat um, and sort of like a proper lady's garb um, since she is uh, overdue for marriage and hopes to catch the eye of an attractive young lad and settle down and have kittens of her own one day. And even though she has grandma vibes, she is not a grandma. <laughs> She, I mean, Grandma Vibes are, are back in style, I feel like. I think so. Um, she would be yeah. popular on Instagram if it existed <laughs> <laughs> in this world. Uh, uh, even though you do not have necessarily a family to call your own, you uh, you absolutely, absolutely do stay busy. Uh, as the little boy walks out the door, you see a lion has formed outside, outside your door. Um, oh, wow. An accident in the mine must have occurred. Um, or at least that's what you would have thought a year ago. Before the occasional sickness you would treat turned into a full year of struggling to keep up with the demand of the ill within the village. Your joints ache and the pain in your leg that you swear wasn't there yesterday um, is already starting to take its toll on your morale for the day. Mm. Uh, you're, you're within this kind of stuffy hut as you like wipe this, the brow, or the wipe, wipe your, uh, the sweat from the scales on your brow. Uh, and uh, you're, uh, you have a lot of patience waiting to see Miss Mildred. Oh, I do think that sailor's rot is setting in in my leg again, but the people need me. And I, like, get up and open the door and say, Next. As you open the door, uh, the next person in line was not the person that you saw when the boy left. You cut. Instead, you see, uh, you see a bald man walk in, um, take his hat off, uh, and step inside past and say, um, my apologies, Miss Mildred, I did not mean to cut any lines. I just do know that what we do, what we do have to talk about is uh, quite important. Can I see myself in? Well, I know this isn't a conventional business and I don't charge people, but there's still this sort of propriety that one should really observe. And cutting is very rude, but what do you need? Well, I, I, normally I would agree with you, um, but you uh, you do seem to have made a, a, a name for yourself within this town, uh, haven't you? How kind of you to notice. I apologize. My name, my name is Diamond. 
Hello,、um, Diamond. I speak. I speak for the god and goddess. Oh, Noctos and Luna. Okay. Yes, I, I get that response from time to time, but I promise they they need your help. I'm sure they do. Okay, so why don't we sit you down here? Um, I think maybe this <sighs> might be low、confused. blood sugar. I'll get you a biscuit. How long have you been talking to the gods now? <laughs> uh, frankly, uh, a few millenia, millennia.、Oh. Um, <laughs> and、mm-hmm. though I know that this is、um, a little bit out of nowhere, you do come、no. highly recommended. I appreciate it. Like that thing. Not from who you might think. From the your、gods. friends from your. No, from your friends from the your previous adventuring group Shh, that you've worked with. Don't talk.、Past. I don't. I don't know her.、Um, no, I well, don't know them. I don't know from friends、people. in the past. I have worked with them, and while their location is unknown at the moment,、um, <sighs> in their absence, your aid will be required to fight back against the evil at Heaven's doorstep. And where is this heaven's doorstep, pray tell?、Um, it is just within the the gates of Heaven's Keep、oh. on the outer plains.、Mm-hmm. I can take you there now if you want to take my hand. He stands up and offers a hand to you. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's go to Heaven's doorstep.、Um, I tell you what, I'll agree to go with you if you agree to just drink this very calming tea.、Um, And you know, maybe. Do you mind if I take it with us? Sure. Yeah, we can drink it on the way. Just a mild sedative.、Uh, Usually, I can、uh, withstand those, so I think that should be fine. Up、uh, here, grab my hand. Okay, if that makes you feel better. Sure. <laughs> I give him my、grab、dragon claw. Grab his hand. <laughs> um. And we will、uh, we will now switch to、uh, a different location. We now、uh, move to the、uh, inside of a second-story apartment, above what seems to be a rowdy tavern. In this late afternoon, the happy hour crowd seems to have made an early start to the evening, as a whole bunch、uh, the whole building. Is shaking from dancing, singing, and revelry. We pan over to the doorway, above which states the words, "My Brother's Keeper Adventuring Company." Just as at this moment, the door flies open, slamming into the well-worn spot on the wall in which the door handle seems seems to have made an imprint of itself. In stumbles two large figures, a half orc and a half elf, two men of different races that do actually bear a striking resemblance to each other. Leontes Goldleaf and Narix of the Vatrai fall into their favorite well-worn chairs, exhausted. Whew! Big brother, that was fun, wasn't it? Oh, it was、uh, top three, I would say.、Uh, and、three. immediately starts to fall asleep on the on, on the chair. <laughs> every time he does this, every time. Honey, the the, chair.、Uh, the two of you. Have just returned from a month-long expedition, traveling hundreds of miles, slaying beasts and villain alike, and now you finally returned home to receive some well-earned respite. As I watch my brother sleep, I'll unbuckle my armor and I'll、uh, I'll do what I've done every time we've got home, and I begin polishing my armor. Ever the、uh, prepared person, uh, Leo, um, you. Get back into your home that you honestly do not spend that much time in. Since returning to the city,、um, you've been able to start、uh, my brother's keeper adventuring company with your brother, and you've been able to make a name for yourself and go on several、um, uh, many expeditions.、Um, and Narix, as you you fall asleep,、um, the the weight. That has been lifted off of your shoulders from this adventurer. It just—it feels like this sleep is so 
so needed. And as you begin to flutter off, you you see small visions of your ancestral spirits start to flutter in front of you, um, as often does happen uh, when you fall asleep, kind of a comforting presence for you. However, since about the middle of this last expedition that you've been on, your ancestral spirits have begun to take on a new form. Um, as you know, you're, uh, they have adjusted their shape and form and who they sometimes resemble. Um, and the, the your, your spirits now take the shape of two figures, a dragonborn and a humanoid woman. Uh, you just see the outlines of them. You've been able to study them through your times visiting your spirits, um, communing with them and not necessarily being able to find out who they are. Um, but you see at least that outline kind of in golden light of these uh, of these two characters here that you don't really un understand. Uh, in this sort of half asleep uh, state, as soon as they start to manifest, uh, instinctually, um, Nerex will reach out towards whichever figure is a little bit closer. Uh, you see that they're a little bit of distance away from you. They're not far, but you try to reach for them. And as you've done in the past, you try, you know, it's, it's almost as if in, in a dream when you're trying to run so fast, but you just feel yourself not moving at all. This has happened to you in the past where you don't feel like you're you're getting anywhere. Your 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 effort. You 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 realize that you're in a dream at this point. And as you're making this effort towards these these figures, you're not gaining much ground, but you're gaining more ground than you have in the past. And try as you might, just as you try to reach out and grasp them, you hear a knock on the door, startling yourself from sleep. <gasps> uh, I, Leo, you hear this too, obviously. I look. I jump to... up. I look to Nerax. Uh, no one really knows we're here yet. Hmm, maybe somebody followed us. And with a kind of grin and some excitement on, on his face, Nerex grabs uh, the Bloodbound, which is his uh, his halberd. And I'll unsheathe Mother's Kiss. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, it's quite urgent. I need your help. This is um, an adventuring company, right? I'll slowly approach and crack the door with, with the sword behind me. Yes, who are you? Behind the door, you see a, a man, um, very pale skin, a little bit almost unnatural looking. He looks like he looks almost too old and too young at the same time for what he appears. Um, and he takes off his hat as you open the door, holds it to his chest, and you can see that he's bald. I say, um, I'm sorry to bother you both. I was waiting for you downstairs and came up when I saw the two of you had arrived. I'm, I'm here on important business. Would you, would you mind if I step inside and we can, we can speak? I'll look back at Nerex. Mm -hmm. I'll open the door. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Um, it, it's very important business, I promise. Uh, the, the kind of business that that affects the, the fate of the world. As he comes in and Not this again. Uh, mm -hmm. relaxes himself a little bit. Right, um, who might you be? My name is, is Diomed. Uh, I am... My, my title is Mouthpiece of the Gods, and I've learned that not many people take that title at face value. Well, it is very lofty sounding, you have to admit, I mean, that's, it's as if I came in here and said I'm the the conch piece or the, the cod piece of, of the gods. Mm. Uh, There's not one of those yet, but, you know, um, keep working. Leontis, Goldleaf, uh, friends call you Leo and, and Nerex of, of the Vatri. Yes, um, I know both of you by reputation, although we have not met before. Uh, Leo, your, your previous work uh, for your god, Noctos, Lord of Night, he has not gone unno unnoticed. And he would humbly request that you personally aid in defending Heaven's Gates 
from forces of evil unimaginable. You know, look to Nerex. I was afraid this would happen. Nerex, you as well. I've, I've seen that the two of you work in, you work admirably in conjunction with each other and both of you are requested at Heaven's Keep. Hmm. What sort of pay rate are you offering for this? That can be discussed, but unfortunately the matter is very incredibly urgent mm. and... What was your name I again? I promise that my name is Diamond. Diamond, do you mind giving me just a moment or two alone with my big brother? We'll, we'll meet you outside. I can do that. Here, uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, uh, reach into the a coin purse that's um, a payment for our recent assignment, and I'll toss him a gold piece. Buy yourself a drink from downstairs on us. I uh, I do not drink, but I will I will set this down right here. Uh, it kind of like um, condescendingly kind of puts it down. So I will. Um, I'm just going to wait outside the door. And I'm going to leave it cracked um, if. If you need me, just just open this door. I promise. In saying yes, you will you will not regret serving your God. I hope you are under no obligation to join us, but you will be taken to the scene immediately. So, <laughs> before you open that door, grab what you need. Thank you, Diamond. Uh. <clears throat> I'm gonna step away, sort of where 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 uh, uh, Leo and I. I think we kind of have like a, an area where we'll sort of speak a little bit more uh, um, quietly if we're having a meeting with a potential uh, uh, client. <clears throat> well, brother, what do you think? <laughs> it seems like a really important work, which means that I believe we should keep that in mind when we're, you know, negotiating payment. Well, big brother, there's a few things that uh, make me weary. First of all, he says it's of no obligation, but when a god asks you to do something, I feel as if you're sort of obliged to do it, especially if it's the mm. god you've been serving for however many blasted years. All right, but even you really believe this person, why would he come to us? Big brother, you know I've, I've taken lives in the service of a god. And well. I am weary that this may be a ruse of some sort. But also, he looks quite sickly, doesn't he? The, the gods tend to have that effect on people. So you think you're, you're taking this seriously? You're not thinking it's some... No, what I do you think? think? I don't think, I, in my experience, this god doesn't take things lightly. Not much humor. You hear from the front door. I, I, I did mention that this was urgent, right? I, I just want to make sure that's clear. Uh. All right, one for the road. And I'll take, I'll pull off a drawer and pull out a big bottle of uh, something dark and nasty. And I'll nice. take a swirl and I'll say it to mother and I'll pass it to him. Mm. I'll take it. To mother, and I finish it. Go, oh, that's a lot. I must collect Nimi before we depart, but let, let's, <clears throat> let's head out. Uh, your giant elk, Nimloth, um, stands uh, outside, connected to a post that she could easily rip out of the ground, let's be honest. Um, but the two of you, if you don't mind, uh, actually describing yourselves before we move forward. Big brother, you first. Uh, all right. Well, uh, Nerix is six foot four, uh, half orc. Uh, he's got long hair, uh, in a ponytail and a big beard. And he is got like a brownish greenish skin tone. Uh, and he is ripped. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, just kind of has a harness across uh, his pecs. Otherwise, he's, you know, shirtless uh, and very hairy. Um, and uh, and he 
it walks around with a kind of sense of power in his step and in his gait. But when you kind of move up to his face, behind his eyes, you just see a giant kid looking around with a still a bit of sense of wonder and awe in the, uh, uh, towards the world. Beautiful. Uh, and if you if you've never seen Leo before, the first thing you'd notice is that his his splint armor, this golden armor, uh, it 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 is almost blinding and takes a second to adjust to uh, when you see him. And and as you adjust, you see this deep copper skin, uh, a golden brown stuff from 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 travel, uh, this long golden brown uh, hair tied taut into a, a sort of messy bun in the back, but tied in the front, um, and these these emerald green eyes that sort of shift color in the sunlight from a deep mossy green to a to an emerald green depending on on, on where you're looking at um and he, he, in the center of this golden armor is a is a, a really ornate emerald um and from it just different shades of green emerald covering that build these these green leaves that uh, uh, sort of cascade upwards uh, and build this sort of cowl uh, that, that rests on, on the top of the, the armor. Uh, and on his left uh, uh, wrist is this, this really ornate golden bracer with uh, uh, emerald green lining and filigree. And, and if you look closer, you can tell it's elvish writing. Uh, and at his side is a, uh, a golden sword with a golden pommel and an emerald green uh, a big emerald set in, in its in its pommel, um, and if you spend too much time looking at it, it looks like it's altering the space around it slightly. Uh, and with him is Nimloth, uh, my giant elk, formed from thousands of of different color leaves, uh, and and his eyes are the same color. Her eyes, excuse me, are the same color emerald green as as mine uh, and its antlers uh, are these old oak deep uh, 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 strong uh, branches that sort of come out and, and seem to be dripping gold almost uh, and, uh, and and that's that's Leontes amazing uh, Nerex you finish uh, this bottle of some dark alcohol uh, as a toast to your mother and and stand up um, your brother alongside you. What do you do? I step forward, open the door for my brother and let him lead the way. I hope we don't die this time. Mm, I hope we do, but then come back. That's all kinds of fucked up, brother. <laughs> That's how I like it. <laughs> As the two of you step through the doorway, all four of you join and feel this intense pull from within your body, unlike anything you have felt before. You feel thrusted through space and time, breaking through the divine gate and finally coming to rest in a completely unfamiliar location. You find yourself in a group, four of you and a war stag and Diomed at the center, this previously unfamiliar, uh, pale skinned, bald man, wearing full robes. And you realize that you're in a very, very different place now. You are on a, a long platform, flanked on both sides by rows of spires and past that an infinite drop to nothingness, only detailed by a thick, endless fog. You see these spires stretch impossibly high and lead in two rows to a hill upon which sits a temple. The temple could be gazed at until your eyes hurt. However, something grabs your attention even more strongly. Two figures, alien appearance and both vastly different from each other, lay at the foot of this hill. One void black with skin dotted with stars, cradling a second much smaller, 
figure whose translucent skin emanates a weak light from within. Mildred was sitting on the floor, but then seeing that there's other people. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, boys. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hi. Uh, hello. <laughs> I'm Mildred. You we said must hi be to all them, having... but not me. And no, I said hi. That was what the second hi was for. It I've was been for... behind you this whole time. Oh, I didn't see you. Did you see me pick that wedgie out? Anyways, um, uh, um, we must be having a shared delusion. I've heard of these. Um, uh, okay. So no judgment. Everyone, tell me what narcotics you've been doing. I've been doing devil's weed mushrooms uh dr dragon acid uh uh you've been doing them all at the same time that's dangerous well, you, if you mix your uppers and your downers in the right proportion you please tell me you're not Does sober it, this nothing. isn't it real it I'm not sober exactly i had a drink right before we came here i had a big drink but it's supposed to be hitting me right about now oh there he goes I ayahuasca um mm, no i don't remember i am extremely mother's sober. milk is what we call it that's weird but i'll try not to judge that it sounds like you're already judging oh no oh no oh no <laughs> my mom was right the gods are real and they've been watching us this whole time and they're gonna know all the bad things I did. Oh no. Oh. Diamond speaks up. The gods couldn't care less about the small bad things that you've done. Oh, my mom uh, was wrong. You don't mind following Get me. Get fucked, mom. Okay, yes, continue, sorry. <laughs> There's the one. Um, no, it, went already, <laughs> it already got used. Diamond begins <laughs> walking <Yeah>. down. <laughs> As long as it wasn't me. <laughs> Diamond starts walking down this uh, this platform between the two spires towards the two figures uh, under his breath so that all of you can hear. Uh, he says, before you was Noctos, the god of darkness, and his lover, Luma, the goddess of light. Hmm. Now gods go through a life cycle and Luma is at the end of hers, which causes her to be in a vulnerable state. This is not knowledge widely known among mortals in order to protect the gods and all of you. However, this news has leaked to forces of evil and now zealots that belong in sect that worship the, that worship Noctos as a god of evil rather than what he truly is are threatening to break down the walls of this place. You turn around and see in the distance, the walls of Heaven's Keep are uh, in front of just smoke billowing out from behind them. Flames lick the top of them, and a gate at the center is bulging from the outside and is threatening to break at its hinges. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. You would think that the god of night would just, you know, do away with his followers. I would, I would caution speaking ill of the gods whilst in front of them. Honestly. I've done I would more also dangerous things. Caution against speaking bad about the gods in front of um, what is clearly a, a, a paladine. Is that how you pronounce it? Pal. That's the weakest looking paladin Pal I've ever seen. Oh. And oh. to be I, fair, we shouldn't I'm talk about gonna... the gods as if they're not here. I'm just. Oh. oh. The tension. I have some salve for that burn. <laughs> <laughs> should us now require it? Um, no, no self uh, required. I'm, I might require some. Uh, I did actually get badly burned on uh, our last adventure, and I will uh, actually walk up to you and show you an actual burn mark. Completely oh not my standing goodness. Um, it hurts. Uh, it's still, I, don't, well, I, I just don't want it to leave a scar. I mean, I like scars, but I just, not, not there. Not this one. Some people think scars are um, attractive. Uh, I can. I'll show you a sexy scar, and I will, <laughs> like, I'll start. I'll draw your attention around. to <laughs> to uh, uh, this scar that's like right above, like right around my pelvic bone, and it's oh, like a oh. like a claw mark. And you're continuing to pull the pants down. Um, I this can, is a sexy scar. This I is can, not. This is just a I, burn I on my forearm. It. I can fix it, please. The uh, two of you straighten up. 
Diamond turns around and scolds you a little bit. You are in the presence of gods. Now, I do that. turns around and oh. <laughs> turns around I think as you have a very grown different closer. Kind of God right now. <laughs> you can see that the dark god in front of you, Noctos, is massive. Uh, the lighter one, Luma, seems to be shrinking in size, almost comparable to your size at this moment. Not Diomed speaks up. My lord, these are the mortals that have stepped up to defend our Queen Luma. I pull my sword and immediately fall to my knee. I see that, and then I do it too. I'm like, oh, is that where we're supposed to? And I get on my knee as well. Noctos' attention is not necessarily drawn from Luma, still looks down, but addresses you. You comfort us in our time of need. We thank you for that. Luma now finds herself going through her rebirth, a painful and dangerous experience for us gods. If she is slain again, the long winter on your plane will continue. I was about to ask what so happened. close. Diamond turns to you. If a god dies during their rebirth, the rebirth begins anew. And they go through the cycle again. And without the sun, without the goddess of light, your plane will suffer even more than it already has. This happens once every few millennia. So what is our purpose here? To defend her while she is reborn. Diamond's gaze turns towards the gate. This gate has never been breached. And if it collapses, there might not be any hope of defending this place as all the walls might fall as well. And we're really the At ones you point. chose to defend this. You are. Um, oh, wow. As hard as that might be to believe, you are. And at some point, we will have to open that gate to relieve the pressure. But it will not be long until Luma is reborn. Tur turning my attention towards the gate, is there, we can hear pounding and people, or yeah, I guess people trying to break through it right now? Oddly, you cannot. There seems to be some sort of barrier that causes sound to not be able to get past it. Oh, can we see it's like struggling to hold or? It's struggling to stay, yeah. Well, I, not to question your judgment and I kind of get up off of one knee now. Um, I understand why they're here because they have like a million abs, um, but uh, y'all know I'm just like a, a a, like a like a, a druid, right? Mildred, you are here for a reason. Okay, cool. Diamond turns away from you towards Noctos and say, if it pleases you, my lord, I must escape from this battlefield. I wish you all luck. Oh, wow. You're leaving us. You're a way out, are you not? You brought us here. How else are we supposed to leave? Noctos will let me know when it is finished. Now, oh. he snaps his fingers and he's gone. Well, it's certainly good to know that Heaven has middle management. Noctos looks to you all. Says, please protect us. Luma needs me. So it'll be up to you. Why just us four? Why not an army? To fight off what might be an army trying to break through this wall. This the large one smart. has a point. Yeah. Yeah. My decision is to have a small team defend as the four of you can be trusted. This gate is about to fall and I will open it. Are you ready? I, I haven't uh, looked up at, at Noctos yet. I've sort of been on my knee with my sword up uh, and I'll, I'll stand, still not having looked at him. Uh, and I'll say, uh, it is my duty. And I'll mount Nimi. And, uh, and look to Nirax. Are you hopping on, big brother? I... 
I give Leo a a look that has a kind of sadness in it. Uh, and I'll walk to um, to to my well. We haven't. I haven't learned your names yet. So I walk to the the feeble dragonborn that's oh yeah near me. And if you're still on the ground, oh, you've you've come up. But I'll mm-hmm. offer you a hand. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm I'm uh, Mildred, Mild- Mildred, Mildred, Miss Mildred Mulvahill. Hello. And I'll uh, I'll take your hand. Uh, I am Netix, and that is my brother Leo. As and, I shake uh, your hand, I... I cast Cure Wounds and heal your burn. <gasps> oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Forgive me, and f- actually forgive my uh, my brother. He's intense, and this no, might it's be a good. trap. We may have been here. It's comforting. I would think that we're gonna die, but his intensity, I, it's, it's really helping your girl out well, a little well, bit. You know, I I do like it. I'd hate to, we're I'd hate to break to that spell for you, but that intensity, exactly. He looks forward to that moment, I fear. <clears throat> of dying? Is that why he's so excited? They keep talking about you and gesturing. Um, you're right with that. Well, I, I'm quite used to being talked about, talked at, not talked with. It's the shininess. Uh, hmm. You have a shine all your own. Mm-hmm. Usually I try to keep that under wraps, actually. I think you're going to have to let it out now as I look towards the gate. Um, My skills are better in shadow. Last thing I say to Mildred as I approach uh, uh, Leo is, uh, yes, he has a death wish, um, but I'm not ready to let him go yet. I would appreciate whatever efforts you undertake to keep him with us. Oh, of course. Okay, so just a quick tally count. Who uh, can manipulate the weave and knows a little bit of magic? Hands? Mm. Okay, okay. That's a good start. That's a good start. Um, Me? Fire? Uh, And other stuff? You, and she points it at you, Holly. Oh, I do a little bit of everything except healing, to be honest. I'm a sorcerer, artificer, you know, talented in invention. Oh, okay. So that means you work really hard to do things that come to some of us very naturally. More like the opposite. Oh. I'm sorry. I just know very little about you people. Um, I've heard of you in theory. Um, But I also know very little about you people as well. I've also heard of you in theory. So so you're going to like call on God power, but the gods are like dying. So how does that, are you going to be any good out there? Like what's going to, is it just me and the buff orc boy? Like what's going to happen? The gods are not dying, Mildred. It looks so, like they are indeed dying. They, one of them, anyway. She looks like she's in a bad way. Death I, is rebirth. She is being born again, unless we do not do our jobs here. Well, let's hope everyone here knows how that. to do their jobs, because well, it's probably getting close to time. If the four of you make it through this, you can get to know each other after. Are you ready? Yes. Um, I'll approach Leo, and uh, uh, and Eric is twirling his uh, halberd as he starts to ready himself for what battle is about to come through. Mildred is just crying, (laughs) but she's ready. But she's just crying. (laughs) As midnight is getting ready for battle, uh, how? Please. 
Persephone describe what Midnight has looked like? How does she prepare? So Midnight is currently has a hood covering most of her face and it's cloaked in shadow. It doesn't seem like the most natural seeming shadow. Like it covers her face entirely and she pulls it back. Um, she has tightly curled short green hair. Um, she wears a scarf over her head in black, black studded armor under this overwrapped loose fabric, also in black. Um, she has a very thin face, lacking like any sort of fat around the cheeks or around the lower face, and a very hawkish sort of like hooked nose and dark brown eyes. And um, she assesses her crossbow which is um, silver and inlaid with magical runes. She checks the daggers at her side. Um, and she also taps a floating silver orb um, on the side, just sort of like taps on the glass of it to wake it up. And it sort of like glows with like three bursts of red light, almost like a computer starting up and then slowly recedes into this glowing wisp within the center. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Midnight. I had fallen asleep for a moment. It seems as if we are in a very different place than we once were. It does, and we'll have to go back there at a certain point. But for now, it appears that we have an audience of actual deities. Well, I'm here if you need me, Miss Midnight. Thank you. You know I appreciate you. Uh, as Leontes readies for battle, what is he doing? I think uh, I am watching my brother and seeing that interaction and taking in Midnight. Um, I feel a little bit emboldened and, and not so sure we're all going to die as these people look sort of formidable. Even, even the lithe dragonborn, there's a bit of power there percolating under the surface, I can sense. Uh, and I'll lean in to Mimi and I'll say, uh, thank you as always, my friend. Uh, and I'll whisper in Elvish into the bracer. And anyone who's paying attention will see that the Elvish writing that sort of encircles this bracer is going to start to move. Uh, and, and it looks like it's revolving around the bracer. And then it'll sort of shift from the bracer into the air and take shape uh, of a shield. Um, and when the sh when it finally forms, there's like a, a almost like a fragmentation around the space uh, around the shield, and you see that it's it's a perfectly shiny mirrored surface on one side uh, that seems to be almost attached to the bracer. Uh, and I will unsheath my sword, and uh, I would normally say a prayer to Noctos, but he's is right here and I still haven't summoned the courage to look towards him so I, I will try and just ever so slightly sneak a look up at Noctos. As you look to Noctos, the Lord of Darkness, he looks right back at you, meets your eyes and gives a slight nod and looks to the gate and with a wave of his hand, the gate slowly opens. What you don't see is a rush from dozens of creatures, large and small, pouring through the gate with bloodlust. Instead, you see a mass of bodies fall through, slain and piled against the doors. As they spill through the gateway, one figure covered in gore steps over them covered in black and red plate mail, walks in a behemoth of a man. Dark eyes pierce through you towards his quarry. My lord of night, my king of shadow, Noctos, I have come to slay your foil. The wretched goddess Luma will be no more and I will be your champion, my king. The Crimson Herald, your greatest warrior, slayer of all others who wish to be your blade, will stand at your side when this day ends. 
he cr begins to cry and weep in, in mania. Noctos bellows from behind you. You fool! You do not represent me. Those who you have slain do not represent me. You are nothing but a misguided, rabid dog. These true disciples will put you to rest. Disciple is such a strong word. Yeah. The Crimson Herald steps forward. A test for my lord. I will dispatch them to prove myself to you. He's just he not that into blade. you. Stop. Mm, <laughs> you are kind of He draws of a his lot. blade, foaming at the mouth, and readies himself as three formless sprites arise from behind him, again, circling his head. Let's roll for initiative. Oh. Let's do this in real life. Gonna use the smoky die. Oh, oh right. shit. He fell. Yes. Do you want to roll my dice? Uh, I had to roll that three times, not because I was re-rolling, but because it kept falling off my desk. <laughs> I rolled so. a nat one. <laughs> I so. got a 10. Oh so. This works. Because <laughs> I feel like I would be hiding behind probably the half work. Mildred bit. rolled a nat yeah, one. Yeah, I rolled a nat one. So like, yeah, I'm like... To oh. a total of three? Yes, for a total of three. Hiding behind the half work or getting a view of that booty. <laughs> no, I think in this case, well. this. Oh yeah, three, three both. twin. I think I'm like Mildred's uh, just like terrified. Who rolled a three? I also uh, Leo. Three. Okay, Leo rolled a three. Uh, Holly, I got seventeen. Midnight. I rolled a ten. Seventeen. Ten. Oh, Incredible. I got a seventeen. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Let me go a couple more. Okay. All right. We begin with Nerix. You stand about. 40 feet away from the Crimson Herald, this armored behemoth of a man, uh, <laughs> considered size large, just so you guys are aware. Um, what do you do with your turn? He's 40 feet away from me? Okay. I am, yeah. I look to my brother and I take him in in his, in his this sort of a, uh, uh, Sadness kind of washes over my eyes as I go into rage. Uh, and yeah. rather than it being this like intense, like loud, uh, primal sort of rage, everything calms. And the only thing that I see is my baby brother. And then I turn to our enemy and I'm gonna go mess them up. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move 30 feet. So I'm gonna get within 10 feet of him, and I'm gonna activate uh, Rex attack, and I'm gonna strike him with my bloodbound halberd. Amazing. And that will be uh to hit. It is a. Uh, 30 to hit. 30 to hit. I think that'll hit. Uh, um, great. So then I'm going to go ahead and roll the damage here. I'm going to activate my Orcish Fury attack and uh, roll an extra weapon attack. Uh, so he's going to take... Uh, 22... 25 points of damage. You strike out with your halberd with your first attack, and he gets blown backwards, not drawing blood, but unsteady. Second attack. Second attack. I'm going to then uh, use with my second attack, since uh, that landed so cleanly, I'm going to use my great weapon master, take a minus five to hit. All right. And that is going to be another, let's see, another 30 minus 525 to hit. 25 will hit. Okay. And this time he's going to take. Uh, 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 uh. This one's going to be. Uh, 27, 30. Slash. 30. Damage. 
30 points of damage with your second strike. As you slash out at him with Bloodbound, you're able to gash his cheek as he recoils and returns his gaze towards you with a wicked smile. Uh, with a remainder of my movement, I'm back up towards my brother. All right, how much movement do you have left? I got with, he was 40 feet away from me, so I got within 10 feet. And you have your so, rage movement as well. And I have, yes, 15. Uh, so I get back, I think 25 feet from him. It's like within 30 okay. feet, 10 plus 15. Yes, so I back up. I'm 35 feet away from him. All right, cool. In reaction to this, the three sprites that circle his head zoom out and begin hovering near Midnight, Leo, and uh, Mildred. And as this is happening, it is his turn, and the Crimson Herald starts slowly walking towards you. With his 40 feet of movement, he's able to make it within range of you and makes two attacks, three attacks, my mistake. At advantage, because I'm- At advantage. <laughs> I use reckless attack. Uh, 18 to hit. Uh, that hits. Second one hits. And a nat 20 on the last one. Oh. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to, let's see. He slashes out, shield in one hand, long sword in the other. Um, Morning Fang, his long sword slashes down, uh, uses, all right, this is three of these. Man, I should just do this. It's a lot of numbers. <laughs> um, 13 on the first hit. Points of damage. Got it. Second attack. 16 points of damage. And on the crit. Uh, he max damage 16 plus 12 bonus is 28 points of damage on the final one. Damn. As he slashes out with this longsword. DM, how close is 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 uh, Nirax to me at this moment? He began 40 feet away, went back 25 feet. So he's about 15 feet away from you at this point. Uh, okay, so I will. That is 13, 16, and that last one was how much? 29? 28. 28. 13, 16, uh, All of that is slashing damage. Um, he also has fire damage on top of that. And while I'm raging... So all of that got halved. Oh, great. All of that got halved? So... so because, all of that got halved as you rage. Yes. So I'm having the numbers that you gave me, or you already halved it for me? I did not have it yet. Okay, good. <laughs> I was about <laughs> to get real scared. <laughs> Uh, cool. But that did, uh, I also didn't include the fire damage that he does with each of those attacks. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to roll those now. Oh, cut it. That's 18 points of fire damage for the first attack. Fuck. These do not get half. No. Second attack. Oh my gosh, these are high numbers. He rolled 2d10 fire damage. First one's 18, second one's 19. Oh my god. Okay. Got it. Third one on the crit oh, no. is going to do. 4d10 instead of 2d10. So I'm going to roll this twice. First one's 14. Second one is five. So 19 on the third attack. How's uh, how's Nerex looking? Oh God, I gotta let me let me. I mean, that was a lot of damage, especially with some of that halved already. So everybody, roll perception checks for me. Uh, perception, you said? Yes. 22. Uh, 27. And I mean, I'm almost down by half. I just took 85 points of damage. Wow. Yeah, you think this guy was going to be a pushover? I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think he was. Uh, perception checks from that, but... Mildred and. Uh, I got a 20. And Nerex. You got a 22? Check. I got a 27. 27, mm -hmm. midnight. 23 for me. Was that an 18? You're muted. I got a six. 
Six, okay. Um, the three of you, not Midnight, realize that the the Sprite, this, this uh, kind of gaseous figure that is surrounding Midnight is actually glowing red with each of these three strikes. Um, mm. And with that, um, Wait, say that one more time. You, uh, the orb that is kind of surrounding, not the one that is originally around midnight, but this kind of gaseous sprite that is surrounding her glows red every single time that the Crimson Herald made an attack. Ugh. Um, All right, that is the Crimson Herald's turn. It is now midnight's turn. Um, So I am going to bonus action hide. Okay. And then I am going to, from hiding, fire off my heavy crossbow bolt. Um, you see that um, as she like holds it, a bolt automatically appears of silver light. Um, I'm going to aim for the big guy, even though um, this thing around me is gaseous, so I can't hit it with this probably. But um, and I'm gonna get sneak attack from that from the hide, as long as he doesn't spot me. If you hit, yeah. Uh, let me see if roll roll, for roll stealth. hide roll yeah. your uh, self yeah that's roll a sixteen sixteen I'll roll for him uh he gets a plus four to this roll I did not roll high where's my d one where'd you go there you go uh that's only a twelve okay cool so. He's not paying attention to you. His, his focus is purely on Nerex um, of uh, of his tribe. I am also you, going uh, to take. You're able to sharpshooter. Okay, you have a minus five plus ten to the damage. Let's see if you hit. Ooh, somehow doubt it. Um, that is a nineteen. I rolled minus five fifteen. That will not hit. Okay, that's it for my turn. You only get the one attack. Yep. I think. Hold All right. On. Wait. Yeah. Uh, you do get advantage because you're hiding. Oh, right, 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 yeah. right. Let's do that again, please. Now. Now. Ooh, no. No. No, that's not going to hit nope. either. Uh, with a nine minus five to four, um, Holly shoots uh, shoots her crossbow and it zooms right past him, and he looks towards you and recognizes that uh, there's somebody who's also targeting him. Uh, but right now it is Leontes Goldbeep's turn. Actually, hold on. No, keep Ooh, going. I, 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 oh, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> no, um, let me see if I actually took this thing. Um, I did not. Okay. So there's like one rogue thing that allows you to not be noticed what direction you're coming from if you're hidden, but I don't think I took it. So. All right, Leo. Okay, so in front of me, uh, how far, you said about 15 feet away from me is my brother, uh, and mm -hmm. and Big Bad is in front of him about five feet, right? So he's about 20 feet away from me. Right. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to, I'll lean into uh, Nini and, and charge straight at um, my brother who's in front of me. And then at the last, so I'll move those okay. 15 feet at the last moment, we'll sort of skirt around him. Uh, and I'm going to take a big swing as I'm turning around, because I'm going to try and get behind this thing. Uh, I'll take a big swing on the turn. Uh, and uh, let's see if I hit. All right, hold a hit. 24 to hit. 24 will hit. Um, I'm going to throw a blade of Paladine. So we're gonna, we're gonna start small. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll damages and I'll throw a 2d8 uh, on this for a smite at first level. Okay. Um, um, even though you are a mounted combatant in which you would, uh, while you were mounted, be able to get the advantage on it, uh, creatures that are smaller than your mount, mm -hmm. this creature is just as large as Numi. Sure. Crimson Herald is a, a large, large creature. Sounds good to me. I'm gonna roll damages. Um, uh, max damage, I'll roll 2d8 now, and play my spell slot. Uh, plus another 10 points of damage. Um, 
Okay, so 19. 19 points of damage total on the first attack. I'll com I'll complete right. my movement and get behind him. Are we flanking now? Yep. Did um, not because no. Oh, yes, actually, you are. Okay. Do we get? Do I get advantage on the flank, uh, even though he's larger? Sure. Okay. Uh, sure. Why not? I'll take the second attack and uh, I'll say it in in uh, in Elvish and I'll say, "No one touches my big brother." And I'll come down with the uh, with the second attack. All From right. The lives. Here we go. So that's a 19 on the first roll, um, a 28 on the second roll, I'll take the 28. 28 will hit. Uh, I'll roll damage on that and I will throw, uh, so that's 15 points of damage and I'll throw a, a, another first level slot on that to 28. So that's 15, 15 there. plus uh, another six. Okay, 21. Points of damage. Yes, uh, and with my bonus action, I will. Oh, and there's Divine uh, Smite, which is an extra D8, I believe. Right? Is that right, Luis? Uh, you get yep. improved Divine Smite, uh, which is an extra D8 with right? every attack. So you you get. Yeah. So I'm going to roll two more D8s for this. Luis Carrazo, our local paladin expert. I'm glad he's my big brother. <laughs> Uh, so that would be another seven points of damage out on top. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Negate that. That was two D6s. Um, that's another. Christian, by the way, is playing a, uh, a subclass that I uh, hunger. Yes. Called the Oath of the Execution. Oath of the Execution. So that's another 10 points on top of that, Johnny. Uh, another 10 points. You keep on throwing damage on me. And, and I will bonus action. Um, after I complete that second swipe. Uh, I'll take it just from the attack into a, uh, a, a hit onto the shield. And this loud, um, really pleasant C note will like, erupt from the shield uh, as I use one of my charges uh, to compel Homeboy. He's got to make a, a wisdom saving throw of 15. If not, he's got to attack me and only me. Or if he attacks someone else, it's at disadvantage. All right, he has a plus nine to his wisdom saving throw. Ooh. Roll low. But he rolled a three. That's right, oh, yeah. baby. He's a 12 in total. Uh, All right, yeah. so. That's my turn. The Crimson Herald gets uh, this, this C note rings out from the shield and it seems to enrage him as his gaze focuses back on you. He turns his back on Nerex and his full focus is on you now. However, uh, after your turn and on Midnight's turn actually, the sprites that were surrounding you, uh, you can see it kind of gaze right in front of you and then shoot into your chest. Okay. Um, and it goes straight through you or attempts to. It's going to roll an attack. Uh, on Midnight, it is an 18 plus 8, 26. That'll hit. And on Leo, it is a 13 plus 8, 21. That hits. Each of you lose one hit die. Oh. oh. Each of us lose one hit die. Actually, no. hold on. Um. I am going to uh, Silvery Barbs for Leo as a reaction. For Leo, so. okay, so. Ooh, midnight. That's a no Oh, you're right there? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds wrong. Silvery Barbs, it's just because Silvery Barbs is such Silvery <laughs> Barbs really gets it us the It does get that reaction, it sure does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I banned it from one of my games, legitimately. <laughs> I understand, um, yeah. but I love it. it Leo, kind of instead crashed. of a 21, that is a 19. That does not hit. Midnight, you beautiful that does not hit. I am great. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> this is gonna be um, bad. You, f you see this at the last second. This orb tried to shoot through you. This ethereal orb tries to go past you and like through your chest. And you're able to dodge and turn your shoulder right at the last second as it kind of glances off your armor. Um, that is your turn. Mildred, it is your turn. You also have an orb or a, uh, a sprite surrounding you. I have a sprite on me. Oh my god! Yeah, okay. sprite on you, not seven up, but a sprite. So first thing I'm going to do. Dumb joke. I'm going to. Um, sorry, I have to I have so many spells as a druid. It's my first time playing a druid of all the things. Oh. Um, like I'm going to healing word, Narix. Uh, okay. using one of my spell slots, um, so that's 3d4 plus 3, 
I only have Dope. one D4 in this tray, so this is gonna take me an hour to roll. Oh wait, no, this is a D4 too. Okay, so that's seven, and then uh, that's 10, and then three, 13. You heal 13, and that's my bonus action. Actually spit taked coffee all over my glasses. Um, <laughs> And the then with my action, I am going to, I can cast one leveled spell and one cantrip per turn. So I'm going to cast Frostbite on the sprite that is hovering near me. Um, they are going to make a constitution saving throw. They need to beat a 16. Okay. Uh, you need to be a 16 con save for plus five. That's a 14, nine on the Okay, die. so they fail. Ooh. So they're gonna take 3d6 cold damage and they have disadvantage on the next uh, attack roll they make against me until the end of my turn. Okay. So, uh, Let's go. As you attack this orb in front oh, of God. you, uh, you, no, you you shoot um, this, this ray of frost at it as it kind of freezes in midair. And then as the ice breaks, it kind of almost is like glitching in and out of existence. It's almost as if it's like not quite there. Oh. You've been able to disable it for this turn. It does not attack you after your turn. Do I still roll damage? Uh, no damage. Okay. I think that is my turn then. Then I'm going to move away from the sprite cautiously and just walk away. Back up a little okay. bit. Um, <clears throat> after your turn, this sprite was going to glow purple and cause creatures within 10 feet of it, namely Nerex and Leo, to take some psychic damage. However, that is not the case this turn, oh. as it is still recovering to come back. I'm gonna um, mention this as I back up and be like, <clears throat> um, hi, not to backseat uh, drive um, the carriage here, but um, maybe focus on the sprites. And then just like back up a little bit. Oh. Okay. All right, um, with, with a uh, legendary action costing two, uh, taking two legendary actions, he's gonna cast a spell. And um, on, he's angry with you right now, Mildred. He <gasps> reaches out to you. And as you are screaming out these instructions, he's silence and yells at you to cast silence on you. Oh, That's so rude. That's that is so, so rude. rude. That's so racist to Dragonborn. Yeah, <laughs> that's just not allowed. Um, <laughs> he's casting a spell with Nerex, a melee range. It is your turn. Is he? Is he? Um, I might be getting my my. Uh, I can't counter spell it. I use yeah, my feet. Uh, mm, no, the yeah, mage slayer good. feet. I do not. I do not. I do not. Not okay. this character. But that's okay. Because is it's Nerex's turn. Okay. Cool. So. From what we I don't just talk perceived, about other characters on our show. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> from, from what I just perceived, uh, uh, it, it Mildred cast this uh, uh, ray of frost on that sprite, and it disabled it for a turn. It seems to have disabled it for a turn. And okay, cool. Um, all right. And how many sprites are? Where are the other sprites? in relation to me. So that one was close enough. That that one the, is 10 feet away. There's a sprite on there's a sprite on everyone except for you. Uh-huh. Our and your brother you, is 10 feet away from you with uh Crimson Herald in between. With Crimson Herald in between. And the sprite next to my brother is that within 10 feet of me? Uh I mean it is within 10 feet of you, but it is not within um like melee range of you because it's on the opposite side of the Crimson Herald. Okay. Because I do have reach with my halberd, so I can strike something that's ten feet away. Uh, but right, I'm going to say not... you're not going to be able to do this because it's a large creature, Got it. and he's, he's, you're not going to be able to attack past him. I can see that. I can see that. Too. Okay, well then, <clears throat> this one's already disabled. That's near me. Uh, I can. Can I pivot around and get pivot around the uh, Crimson Herald to get within striking distance, or at least visual on that sprite? I'm going to try to move around and get him. Is that? Uh, yeah, you can move around absolutely. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. I want to strike this sprite. Um, okay. So let's deactivate this one. Uh, this will be a 32 to hit. 
32 hits. And as you swipe out at it, this green flicker kind of goes in and then out of existence. And it seems to have not be affected. Um, it's not affecting the, uh, or being around uh, Leo anymore, as you seem to have been able to uh, disable the sprite. Now, would that be considered knocking the sprite unconscious? No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no problem. Uh, I'm going to then turn my attack on the Crimson uh, Herald, uh, my next attack. Okay. And that is going to be an. Uh, yeah, I'd like to declare my great weapon master. Is it too late? I already rolled. So I get a minus five. Uh, to I hit. think you have to do it before, before yeah, you roll. Yeah, I see the result of the roll already. So uh, before going that, <laughs> uh, this is going to be a 33 to hit. Ha! 33 will hit. Yeah, I can understand why you'd want to hit. <laughs> uh, I know. I need to remember to do that every time. It's uh, a lot so to remember. So the damage on this. It's a lot to remember. The level 15 character. We're playing level 15 characters, everybody. Yeah. Yep. And some of us went overboard and have three classes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what a sad and roll. Uh, he takes a total of 13. Flat. We'll pivot back 13. around so that I, I'm flanking again for uh, for me. Sure. Uh, you already made two attacks. Yes, I'm just oh, positioning but you have myself. Your, the, yes, but you also have your um, your pole, pole arm uh, matcher. I do not have no? that. No? No, no, no. I gotcha. swapped that out. Gotcha. <laughs> I would be gotcha. doing those bonus I... attacks all the time, but nope, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> I'm just making sure that I'm flanking for Leo, sure. uh, uh, so I'm behind the, the Crimson Herald. Any That's bonus action for me? No. All right. It is the Crimson Herald's turn. Actually, after your turn, Nerex, it is going to use its last legendary action, and it is going to attack... Uh, actually, it's going to move, um, not taking any, uh, not provoking any opportunity attacks, and is going to run towards um, Midnight. Yikes. And Midnight, he's going oh. to run towards you um, with his turn starting now and is going to make uh, an attack on you. Lovely. Make three attacks on you, actually. Wait, can I still... Hold on, can I still uncanny... I don't think I can uncanny dodge. Nope, um, I use my reaction. First one is a 24 to Oh, hit. you know that's going to hit. Yep. 22 to hit. Yep. 19 on the die. Yep. Wow. Okay. That's three hits. I have 102 arm, hit uh, points. Single... Okay. Well, Damn. let's see what happens. She's, uh, you're not, um, are you, she's not within five feet of me, right? Or 10 feet. No, he, he ran away uh, from you. And that was in the back. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I are, uh, so, is she within 30 feet of me? Sure. Great. Um, then uh, as that first attack, uh, uh, when when a creature within 30 feet of you takes damage. Okay, so I can declare this. I'm about to use Spirit Shield, but if I'm understanding the rule, I can. it says when they take damage, I can wait until they take damage to declare when I use it. Okay, uh, I rolled 19 for damage. I will, I'm gonna use that. So, uh, Spirit Shield, uh, I, you just see this giant, um, uh, it, it actually looks like uh, an echo of Leo's shield. And this like kind of ephemeral uh, leaves scatter in front of you and then they combine into a shield that looks a lot like my brother's. And instead of taking that damage, you will have that reduced by uh that is uh 14 points of damage 14 Thank you. it wasn't it actually was not 19 it was 28 with the fire damage so that reduced by half by half and he takes it instead vengeful spirits so then the shield shatters right. and you see these images of uh, uh these uh, uh humanoid orcish uh, spirits start slashing at the Crimson Herald. Incredible. Um, as you cast the Spirit Shield on Midnight, Bless. the spirit almost like appears in its golden form in like from your vision. You see the, the the form mirroring Midnight's movements, 
that you realize that the spirit that has been in your visions the last couple weeks uh, was Midnight's form and that you are manifesting this. Uh, and that form, when it you see it match her movements, suddenly turns into a shield and blocks um, some of the damage DM. Uh, hitting oh. Midnight. DM, this is important. I might have, yes. I might have, uh, this might matter here. He can't attack anyone besides me, so those are all at disadvantage. Disadvantage mm. is correct. I'm going to roll right. each of those attacks again. Oh, I Both love those, this. All those ones hit the first yes. time. Yes. So I'm going to do that first one. First one will stay, still hit. Second one does a 21 hit. Absolutely. Damn. My okay. AC is 15. Fuck. Last one will hit as well. Yeah, you're. You Thank you so AC. much, though. Um, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> the attempts. Okay. I appreciate it. <sighs> I do. So all three hit. The first one already went through. You used your reaction to spirit shield. Second damage is 17 plus eight, 25 points of damage. <laughs> and the last attack did uh, max damage of 20 plus fire damage of seven. 27 damage. I am how's, extremely how's midnight looking? battered, bruised. There is large chunks of flesh missing. She does not look good. I'll say that. Uh -oh. Crimson Herald looks absolutely uh, overjoyed right now. Uh, midnight is your turn. I am going to, in reaction to getting absolutely slaughtered by this jerk, going to pull out my spell focus, which is a paintbrush. The end is going to glow with blue light and I'm going to slash into the air and these wisps of droplets of paint will come off and they will turn into a spiteful, angry blizzard um, as I cast um, Rhymes Blinding Ice at a fourth level. That's okay. a con save. Con save. It's a plus five. I'm not rolling these concepts very well. That's a 13. That does not work. Um, that is 27 ice damage. Nice. Um, and it is covered in ice. Nice. Um, it's hindered by ice formations for one minute um, or until a creature within it uses an action to break away the ice. Hindered by ice, its speed is reduced to zero. Um, yeah. So one minute. Um, and it does not say that you have to re-roll it. So it has to be freed somehow. Unless it uses a legendary resistance okay. or something. Uh, you know what? It will use a legendary resistance. Thank you for You're welcome. Um, <laughs> Curse being a DM. It will use a legendary resistance. Um, let's see. Uh, which one is going to go? So the sprite that is surrounding um, Leo that has been like kind oh, of that would in and out of existence, the green. Quick point. Um, so that's yeah. actually not a single, it's a 30 foot cone. So mm -hmm. um, if it would get the sprites too, that'd be great. Um, I will roll one for the sprite as well. For the one that's on you, it, it rolled very badly. Cool. So it'll take that damage too. It blinks out of existence. Uh, the red kind of dulls into a, like a, this slight burgundy as it uh, kind of looks a lot weaker than it was before. You think that his fire damage might have gone away for the turn, um, but he will use legendary resistance as the uh, orb, the sprite that is surrounding Leo, um, zooms towards the Crimson Herald and kind of reinvigorates him as it enters his body. That one to was break away from the ice. Was that one deactivated on my attack? It was, but these sprites are tied to legendary resistances. Oh, the moment crap. that it is used, the moment that it is used, it is gone. And now he has two legendary uh, actions and two legendary Quick question, where was that second sprite? Was it out of range uh, of the 30 was, feet? Yeah, it was. I tried. So, yeah, how much damage did he actually take then? Um, with a legendary, with a resistance, um, he would have yes. taken half. And what was the total? Do you 27. The total there? 27, so that's 13. Let's give him 14 back. 14 back at me? All right. Or no. Okay, no, 14 no, back at health. health. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, he's going to use a legendary action now to attack. I was going to say, does he have to roll to see if he can maintain concentration on his silence? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Nice. 
Uh, the DC there is... Uh, ten. Wait, I will say, so the resistance might work on the damage, but I don't know if it works on the failed save. What do you mean? Um, so it depends on what kind of resistance is. If it's just a resistance to damage, um, he still has a movement of zero. Okay. Still has a movement of zero. He used legendary resistance, so we succeeded on the on the okay. check on the save. Cool. Save and yeah, he would just take the damage. So yeah. Yeah, and his movement is still at full. Uh, however, the uh, the concentration check rolled a natural one. <gasps> oh. Um, and he silence leaves Mildred. Yes. At least something um, good is gonna come from me turning into pudding. <laughs> uh, and with uh, but with this anger of losing the spell, he strikes out at midnight with a legendary action attack. Does he still attack uh, three times? Without the fire at damage. disadvantage. No, just the okay. one. At disadvantage, thank you for reminding me. First one would hit. Second one hits as well. So he deals. Ah, dang! I would have taken my bonus action to hide. Did I not say? I didn't say that. So yeah, I'll just take the. Uh, that's thirteen points yeah. of damage. I should have hit. That was my own fault. <sighs> well, you could have disengaged this all. This only thing I could have done because hiding, you can't hide next to, right next to somebody. Oh, that's true. Well, how much reach does he have? He's got a good amount of reach. Leo, it's your turn. Uh, I, I'll lean in and say to Nini, you stay here. And then I'll look towards the Guardian and I'll say, you're not playing by the rules. And I'll misty step um, so that I am directly uh behind flanking with 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 uh midnight um hell yeah and i will uh take my two attacks with mother's kiss cool here we go that is a 13 on the first one so that's with advantage let's do this well 28 hits 28 well, um, then, yeah i will roll damage uh, that's 12 points. I'll add a second level smite. So that's 3d8, 48 total. So I'll do that. So that's 12 points. And then twenty one points on top of that. Total nice. so 21 plus 12, 30, uh, 33? Yes. 33. Yes. Dang, yes. all right. Uh, second uh, attack. Critical roll. Second attack. Hell yeah. Crit Crit so if he's under 100, Hell yeah. if he's under 100 HP right now, he, he dies immediately. No chance. No chance. No chance. No chance. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I will, I'm going to put a, a third level smite on this one. Which would be All right. an additional five D eight to the a lot of damage. Yeah, so uh, And then that's doubled if you crit it yes, as well. Yes. All so I'm gonna doubled. roll I'm gonna roll this first. Jesus. Yeah, roll that digital so twice by eighteen oh, points no. of damage and then uh, an extra two points of damage? I don't how is that reading, Johnny? Are you seeing that? Oh no, because there's an extra eight points Maybe. of radiant damage on a crit too. Yeah, did you do your other uh, improved divine smite? I, I'm gonna add the. I haven't added the five d eight, which is what it would be. Right? So, do you have this gotcha. damage down? Yeah, I'm gonna need you to total it up for me. Oh my god, I just exited. So is it <laughs> is it eleven so far? Uh, it was eighteen points total so far. Okay, eighteen total. Plus an so far. plus an additional eight points of radiant damage. Twenty six. And then now the five d eight here. Well, and this will be doubled, so 60 points of damage. 60 points of damage to a total of 86 points of damage. That really hurt him. You nearly, even without your um, mother's kiss, nine lives uh, stealing greatsword, you almost uh, took out 100 anyway. Uh, and uh, 86? Yeah, and I'll... I'll, I'll uh... I'll look behind me at, at uh, midnight and back at the Guardian, and I'll say, uh, "You should fight fair," and uh, and that'll be my that'll be my turn. Leo, with this uh, incredible amount of damage, you've been able to get him past half 
Uh, he throws down his shield, looks at you in anger, and screams, Enough! You will not stand between me and my god. Grips his sword with two hands, uh, but not before, raising his hand, and three streams of red mist flies out and returns towards the gate that he entered where the bodies have spilled out. Uh, from it, three corpses rise, malformed and disturbed. You see creatures with hooks and harpoons for arms, bearing their teeth at you, and they enter the battle. The forlorn <sighs> enter the battle. Um, Charming. It is, uh, your turn is over. He's gonna make an attack at you with advantage, because he is now attacking uh, Berserk. Let's go. Which is good. The first one was a two. The second one is a 15 plus 13. Uh, 28. That hits. Okay. Silvery barbs. That is... Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Roll again. That is 15 plus 13. That hits. That hits. 28. Dang. Okay. Uh, that is 16 points of damage. Um, the... Who had Midnight had it? Okay, so it's not Midnight's turn again. He does not get that fire damage, however. Mm. So that is a total of 16 points of damage to you. Um, the green sprite uh, returns to life, though, um, as it is. Uh, it did not get to it. Does not get to attack you this turn, but it was. Uh, it would have. All right, Mildred, your turn. I don't have very many of these, so um, I don't know if I want to mass. I don't know if I want to mass cure wounds yet. So instead, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to healing word on um, on midnight, and uh, so you're gonna heal. It's not gonna. It's gotta be a little bit lower level. Uh, so that's. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not your your meat boy. So uh, you heal for twelve hit points. I will take it. And um, the way you hear Mildred say this is like. Don't die, little wizard. That would make me so sad. And then <laughs> she's going to waddle forward. And you kind of see Mildred get this like anime glint in her glasses for like just a brief second. And then the electricity and static electricity kind of starts to coalesce around her horns and like then around her entire body. And I'm going to breathe lightning. Uh, it's got a 30 foot range and I'm going to try to hit all three of the forlorn warriors with it amazing uh yeah one save the other two no two save one takes full damage as they lined up perfectly in a line for you they're basically like running single file trying to chase right after you amazing uh you use your bonus action already correct um yes i use my bonus action to heal and so okay. this is my action so um, that's my turn that's your turn uh after your turn um the Crimson Herald is going to stretch his hand to the sky and bring it down as a cloud of mist surrounds him included uh, as he casts Cloud Kill on the two, the three that are surrounding him. Um, I, Nerex, are you in range of this? Uh, yes, because I stayed. Oh, no, no, no. Am I? Because he moved in. He moved. He moved towards midnight. Leo. Uh, uh, moved uh, a after him. Um, okay. I would have moved in. Did, I, did my turn get skipped? I'm not sure. If no, know. not yet. This is all no. still legendary. This is all. Oh my god. No. So then I, I'm still where I was initially um, before he moved. Okay. Cool. So you're not in range of this. Um, okay. But I will ask everybody to make uh, everybody, the two of you actually, just Midnight and Leo, mm -hmm. to make. Um, uh, con saving throws. Oh, that's actually a good one for me. That is a 26. 15. All right. Um, 26 uh, saves, 15 does not mm -hmm. save. Uh, is that as... your character sheet probably adds your aura? You get a bonus to your uh, uh, saving throws for your Yes, I get plus. Uh, but I'm not sure if it did or didn't. I would imagine it does, right? It should automatically so save 15. It. it should be, yeah. Okay. All right. 
All right, this cloud overtakes the overtakes you. Those who save will take half damage. Drop it. Uh, 32 points of damage to Leo, 16 points of damage to Midnight. Ooh, that's I'll, not uh, good. That's, as I feel that burn. And he will take it as well. As I as I feel that, that, that burn and pain, I'm just going to uh, sort of laughingly say at him, you're really underperforming in front of the big guy. Uh... <laughs> Uh, 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 Johnny, have I, have I, has my reaction recharged yet? I'm not sure where we are in the terms of order. Yes, it has. Then I'm going to use my spirit shield. Well, to... sorry, actually it hasn't. Your, okay. uh, your turn is coming up soon. Got it. Uh, cause you used it on midnight whose turns right after Crimson Heralds. Um, okay. So he took the damage as well cause he's casting it on himself. Uh, and that is all of his legendary actions. Um, it is now the wrathful forlorn's turn. Uh, as his name implies, he gets real angry, especially at people who attack him. So he's coming straight for Mildred. Yeah. And if he hits, takes uh, she takes extra damage, um, uses his hook hand and tries to attack you. Okay. So one attack, uh, a nine plus eight, 16. Um, that does not hit. Okay. <clears throat> nice. Um, that is its turn. Next turn is the Grave Forlorn who will go after uh, Merrick, who's turned away from him. Let's bring up his sheets. Um, he's actually going to pull, uh, stay away from you, and from about 40 feet away, is going to shoot a harpoon from its arm and try to pull you back with it. Oh. Um, they're not rolling great right now. 13 to hit. No. Second attack. A little bit better. 14 plus 7, 21 to hit. That hits me. Uh, you take 14 points of damage. Um, kind of damage? Piercing damage. That's got it. Seven. Nice. Yep. And then you are considered grappled, and you will uh, be, pull be pulled 30 feet towards it. So now you're 10 feet away from it. Yep. Okay. And a lot farther from everybody else. Great. Great. Uh, all right, so Nerex got pulled in by the Grave Forlorn. It is now the Lamenting Forlorn's turn. It is going to go after. Uh, it's going to go after Nerex as well. Um, it is going to make two arm spike attacks at you. Let's see what happens. Uh, first one is twenty to hit. That Second hits. one will not hit. Um, but you are you grappled? Uh, no, I think it's only both hit. Both hit. You are grappled, but you're not oh. grappled by, by it. Um, okay, so it. you do not take the extra damage, um, but you do take 19 points of damage, piercing damage reduced to nine. Copy that. Okay. Now it is Nerex's turn. Okay, so I am grappled, so I can't move. I have one of these creatures is grappled with me, correct? One of them is grappled, and there are two next to you though. You can use an action to challenge it, though. Uh, or you can use an attack to my show. action. You can use your an attack to show. Um, being grappled doesn't stop me from being able to attack it, though. Correct. Uh, irregularly, right? Grappling us reduces my movement. So I'm going to just, I'm going to go ahead and do mm, reckless attack on All the right. one that's grappling me. And uh, I'm going to use my great weapon master feat. Uh, so that is going to be a 24 to hit. That'll hit, yeah. All right, so he's going to take uh, the damage you're going to get is Uh, that is 25, 28 damage. 28 Slash damage. On that first attack. I think it looks really hurt. Okay, second attack. Yeah. 
Uh, second attack is a 21 to hit. 21 hits. Get that damage. Okay. He's going to take... This is... 26 points of damage on this attack. All right, 26 points of damage. That thing is very, very hurt. Crimson Herald's turn. It is in the middle of its own poison uh, cloud right now, just wildly swinging. It is going to take an attack at advantage on Leo. So let's roll twice. Um, 18 plus 13, 31. Second, second attack is a nat 20. The other one was a one. The third one, the nat one again, or a two nat ones on advantage. So you are gonna get hit with, uh, also you're taking, oh, you're not taking the order of service because the sprite is gone. Um, you are taking first turn, first hit is a 15 points of damage. This one is uh, 10 plus 12, 22 points of damage. Um, both of them slashing damage. There is no fire damage anymore because the fire orb is, uh, uh, not working anymore. Okay, that is its turn. Uh, Holly, it is your turn. All right, so I am going to leap to the side and tumble so that I'm away from this. I'm gonna take the disengage action as a bonus Great. action to do that. And then I am going to epic Mickey from behind this sickly green splash of paint and cast acid arrow. Hell yeah. Um, let's see. Rolled Actually, um, where are the other two undead? Uh, there are two on Nerex, there's one on Mildred. Yeah, but where are they like in reference to either the big bat or me? Um, on the opposite side of you, a little bit to the right, are the are two with Nerex, and then far to the left uh, is the other one on Mildred. Are they within 30 feet? I'll say the one with, the, with Mildred is, yeah. Okay. Um, like of each other, I mean. Um, not within, uh, yeah, sure, they're, they're within 30 feet of each other. Okay, cool. So this would hit Ooh, you call lightning. both of them. Mm. No, I do not have that spell. But what I do have is tidal wave. So Ooh. a giant wave of water will splash into existence. Um, Let's hope that within range, um, okay. So I'm going to try and angle it so that it doesn't hit Mildred. So that it should end right on the creature. Okay. Um, so basically I'm gonna move far back enough, take my movement far back enough that um, I can cast it in this range of 120 feet, but I'm gonna cast it so that the point starts 30 feet away yep. from Mildred. Absolutely, what's your saving, what's your uh, save DC? Um, 15. 15, one saves. Okay, uh, so that is the that is the one that is grappling Nerix. Um, how much damage do they take? Um, so that is going to be four d eight, not four d eight, four d eight. Um, so roll. That is twenty damage. Twenty if you don't um, save. 20 if you don't save, 10 if not, and then it, any creature that is in that 30 feet area, which might include the big guy, um, has to, is knocked prone if they didn't save. Awesome. Uh, Mildred, this one is, in, is prone in front of you, uh, mm -hmm. as well as for you, Nerex. Not the one that is grappling you, but the one that hit you is on the ground in front of you. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Holly, is that your turn? Uh, that is my turn, correct. Uh, Holly, it's gonna, uh, Crimson Herald's gonna use uh, one legendary action to attack you. At Me? Disadvantage? At disadvantage. Uh, a 24 hits, uh, it is going to Silvery heal. barbs. Silvery can I do barbs. that for myself? I think I can. Did you already use, yeah, you already used your, you haven't used No, it's been my that's, turn. Yeah, that's gonna hit. No, so since it's been my turn, I get my reaction back. Yep, no, that will hit though, he rolled another 15. Okay. Um, okay. What was the, so? Is that two attacks? Uh, that was one attack, and it's you take fifteen points of damage. 
Uh, Leo, Holly is crumbling. Wow. Holly um, is almost on the ground. Midnight is mm -hmm. nearly unconscious. Yeah. Wait, wait. Did he move with his legendary action too? Uh, no, he did not. Were you not within range of him? I oh, moved, you moved my full yeah. movement. Okay, so oh, Leo, that would have hit, that would have attacked you instead. So you take uh, fifteen points of damage. Okay. Would it Holly have hit still? Twenty-two. Yes. Or actually, more than that, fifteen. Yes. Okay. Um, Leo, your turn. Oof. Right. Uh, I I am looking pretty uh, damaged here, but it's okay, and I smile. Uh, and so it turns no axe. Who, uh, who's, who's being grappled, and I give him a nod, uh, and I'll, I'll move in. I'll, I'll, I'll take the long sword and attempt to stab through the center of this thing and take my momentum forward. With advantage on this attack because of my new friend here, I roll a 23 uh, and total damage. That will hit. Yes. Yep. 52 points of damage. <laughs> uh, Leo, how do you want to kill the Crimson Herald? Well, uh, holding my sword aloft, I say, ah, disappointing. And I stab it through the center and pull it close towards me and whisper in its ear, it'll be easier for me to kill. And pull it from its core and let the body drop, and I'll take a knee in front of me. And then the body ready myself. drops blood having spilled from his mouth a manic smile upon the face of the Crimson Herald. His dark eyes close and the Crimson Herald is no more. This does get Noctos' attention and he nods to you. As we are out of initiative, the forlorn fall dead. Uh, as they once were, the corpses are no longer, um, no longer animated. Nocto scatters all four of you together. Thank you. She is almost back. This light is nearly gone from within Luma's chest. And the moment it dissipates, there is a moment of silence before it explodes out from here, nearly blinding you. You cover your eyes and there is so much brightness. And as you recover, you look down upon Luma and see an olive skinned woman, blonde hair falling gracefully over Noctos' hand, cradling him. And for a moment you see rays of sun breach the clouds for the first time in a year, you see the sun light, but it is not quite all there because it is peeking out from behind the moon in a solar eclipse, almost total. Luma looks up with dreary eyes, says, is it done? Noctos looking down on her says, it is my love. It is time for you to rejoin me on your throne. The induction ceremony will begin. He helps her to her feet and waves his hand over all of you. And with a wave, pulls you all into the air and you all fly following him into the temple upon this hill. As you come upon it, you see that there is an altar within the middle and upon which sits a crystalline shape about a foot long being held aloft over the altar. Nocto says, as he stands there next to the altar, we must work quickly, my friends. I want to thank you for helping us. We will make it worth the time and effort that you have dedicated, among other things promised. We would like you to be the first mortals to witness an induction ritual. My lord, uh, forgive me, I, I may be speaking out of turn, but my new friends and I and my big brother have taken damage here. Is there anything we can do for us? That would be to... putting it mildly. Yes. You may rest, but I must focus on this ceremony. Well, it is done wrong. Could mean calamity for the world. 
let alone Fuluma. The induction ceremony is what allows her to become a god again. She is in this form somewhat mortal. She is basically a demigod in this form. And she needs to be inducted as soon as possible. You may rest here, but I must begin this. Okay. Um, I'll tend to my friends and um, if you don't mind, I'm just going to look away from the induct because it sounds very personal. I don't know what the gods are calling it these days, but I don't think I need to see y'all and <laughs> Inducting each other, I would just rather. If y'all are into it, that's cool. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna just help. I would watch. <laughs> I have absolutely no qualms with watching. I'm gonna reach over and and put my hand on Midnight's shoulder and say thank you for your, your help. And I'm gonna give you uh, twenty points of healing. Nocto speaks up. And mm. walk over to my brother uh, and put head forehead to forehead and uh, and say, oh, are you all right, bro? I'm all right. And as are I do that, right? I'll give him, oh my god, uh, 30 points of healing. Mm. You feel his forehead kind of nudge into yours a little bit more, a little more pressure on it. Okay. And uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Narix tells you, good job, brother. You hear Nocto speak up. Mildred is, I understand your concern, but there will be nothing entering Luma besides this divine. Oh, person. oh, oh, that's just, that's a lot. I, this is, um, I, I don't think uh, you're helping. Oh, this divine oh, tear, oh, uh, he holds up the crystal, <laughs> oh, is what okay. unlocks the key to allowing a demigod to become a god again. Who among us doesn't have a crystal at home for such purposes? I'm not one to judge. I This is it's not what it seems. Okay, okay. Um is the crystal going inside of her? Okay. I don't think we need to um in which uh, way is it entering? Oh god. Okay. I'm very curious. Uh, From a voice behind you you hear It's not exactly what you think, but I, for one, don't want to see it happen either. Oh. You turn around and see a girl, roughly teenage in appearance, with gray skin and jet black hair, with a slight red glint to her eye. I mean, I know I don't want to see it. Who would want to see their parents doing something like that. I mean, Noctos. I'm about to watch your parents do something like that, so. Noctos from under his breath says, Umbra? And that is where we will finish oh, session no. one of Dawn and oh. Dusk. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for watching. Um, please tune in next week at five o'clock Pacific, eight o'clock Eastern uh, for uh, the next episode of, of Dawn and Dusk, session two. Um, I am Johnny Stanton. These are my players. Uh, really quickly, introduce your guys self, guys again, where you can find yourself on social media and uh, we will take ourselves out. Hi, I'm Jasmine. You can find me at that bronze girl everywhere. I'm Christian Navarro and you can find me by searching my name. I'm Persephone Valentine, a.k.a. Persephoroth. You can usually find me by going to your local street corner. Hi, I'm Luis Carrazzo, and I used to be on the street corner, but that's not where you can find me anymore. Uh, now you can find me by just, you know, first name, last name, and uh, you'll find me on Twitter and Instagram and any other socials by doing that. And uh, I am Johnny Stan, Johnny Stan IV on social media. You can... Uh... Hope you guys join us next week. Uh, we've been produced by Dan Munoz, um, Nat One Fun on Twitter. And uh, catch us next time for next episode of, of Dawn and Dusk. Thank you guys.